this week I have a really special guest, um, somebody who I met uh, several years ago in business, and I just so admired what she did. We've kept in touch over the years, which has been great. So I want to welcome you to this episode of Ask the Expert online. Um, for those who have watched before, you're familiar with it. And if you haven't, we have done Ask the Expert events in the past. And actually, our guest today, Kate Bransford of Memory Bank, has been one of our panelists when we back when we all could meet live and crowd a room. Um, and she was really popular because as you'll hear in a few minutes, she's um, she's an author, she's been on the Dr. Oz show, and she has incredible information to share with us. Uh, but I want to thank you for joining us today at Ask the Expert, or if you're watching this later, thank you for looking it up and watching us, watching our video. We will continue to make this available on YouTube and on um, our Facebook page. And then I think Kay will also have the information on hers and she's got a fantastic website, which we'll hit on later. So um, the goal here again is to bring you local experts in Kay's case, she has a national reach, but we like to celebrate local businesses, make people aware of them and get really good information out there for you and your loved ones and friends and so on. Um, so today our guest is Kay Bransford. Hi, Kay. Hello. And Kay is the owner and founder of a company called Memory Bank, and she's going to talk to us about um, how she got into this line of work. But what I love about her story is it's very personal and very passionate and something that affected her deeply. She's been able to turn into a business and help other people. So it's, yes, it's a for-profit business, but it is such an incredible, helpful tool for people. And we hope that you get a lot out of it and pass the information along. Um, Kay is what is called, I learned recently, a daily money manager. And she's also sort of a life systems organizer, which will become more apparent uh, throughout this talk today. Um, she is the best-selling author of The Memory Bank, your workbook for organizing your life. It is available on Amazon. Um, and she's appeared on the Dr. Oz show. Um, I think it was a, a segment on Alzheimer's, right, Kay? It was. It was about dementia. Dementia. But dementia. <laughs> Yeah, and she's been featured on the Huffington Post and BBC, and she's um, won an award from AARP uh, for um, older adult-focused innovation. And so we're going to hear a lot more from her, but um, she really is uh, an incredible resource. She's got a fantastic blog, which you're going to hear about. It's a top Alzheimer's blog, uh, as recognized by Healthline every year since 2016. So she teaches classes. Anyway, I could go on and on as you see, but she is a really, really good expert on this field. Um, and before we launch in, we'll have a little discussion. I'll ask questions. And if there's time at the end, we would love it if you would um, shoot us a couple questions on Facebook. Jennifer, who is our Wizard of Oz behind the scenes, will ask the questions for you. Or if we run out of time, you can certainly send us your questions or send them to Kay and we'll follow up with you. Mm -hmm. um, I want to always touch briefly on the Washington DC real estate market because I do get that question, those all kinds of questions related to it a lot. It's been a very weird year and I don't want to spend too much time on it, but our market is incredibly fast paced. If I boiled it down for you, I would tell you that um, it is a very, very strong seller's market. We do not have enough inventory in the entire region, Northern Virginia, suburban metropolitan, um, suburban Maryland and um, DC, so the whole metropolitan region. Uh, certain weeks, one area might do a little better than another week, but in general, contract activity is just killing it. Way, we have much higher rate of properties of contracts, houses going under contract than we did this time last year. And really interestingly, the time a property spends on market, which we call days on market, um, is happening more quickly. So we're spending an average time um, on market right now with listings across the board, all price ranges, all styles of 20 days, 20 days on the market on average. And last year, this time it was 34. So that tells you the market is fast. One segment that's having more, I don't wanna say more challenges, but not moving quite as briskly is the condo market. We think that's a reflection of what's going on with the pandemic and that people are just a little more cautious about being in a building where they have less control. Um, condos are certainly still selling uh, for very good prices and quickly, but just not performing quite as well as the rest of the market. So interest rates remain fantastically low, but below 3%. If you're below three, 
I mean, if you're above three, you might wanna reach out to your favorite loan officer. If you don't have one, reach out to me, we'll make a referral for you. But it is a great time to refinance, bring those payments down, maybe get yourself into a 15 year if you prefer that. It is just a great, great time uh, to buy or refinance. So we're happy to chat with you about that. So without belaboring it any further, I wanna launch into the questions with Kay. Last week we had an estate attorney on, um, Jenica Cassidy, if you remember, you could check it out. And she talked with us about things to be thinking about um, medical directives and um, getting your state and your trust and those kinds of documents in order. And I thought a really good follow on would be talking to Kay. And um, Kay, if we could just launch right in, I would love it because I think it will set the framework for our discussion. Would you share the story about your parents, um, how you helped them? Sort of what became the advent of the memory bank and then the other systems you've put into place? Yeah, so um, my parents planned really well. They were military and so they were, and they traveled a lot. So they had their estate plans in place, financial plans, insurance plans before mom left on trips. She'd always go, you know, here's the check you might need um, to cover things if something happens to us while we're away. So they always thought about it and they were very well prepared. But what happened really was that their health you don't really plan for the health issues that come about. So my parents started to have issues with their memory um, and both of them were simultaneously eventually diagnosed with different forms of dementia. But um, I'm still working in corporate America. I'm raising two children and my parents start needing a lot more help. My mom asked me to go to the doctor with her because um, I had noticed changes in their behavior, in their memory of things. My dad was talking less. And so I was the only adult child of four. I'm the youngest, the one that was still at home, had dinner with them all the time. So I knew my parents really well and I could see these changes. And, you know, it was really their health that made, that changed things. And once the health starts to go and the thinking, you know, their, their memory was leaving, it became really hard to manage to what the plan was and to adapt to what the plan is. Cause we're, we are kind of creatures of habit. We don't change a lot. So. Um, I started going on doctor's appointments with my parents and since I'm managing them for two kids and then trying to absorb my parents' medical, I just yeah. started a binder. So I started to take this binder, take notes, what were their medications, what were the issues, what was their history. Um, and then that turned into, you know, a bill would water, the water got turned off. They signed a contract for work on their gutters in their home with two different vendors and totally forgot that they had signed one contract with another. So I ended up having to step in on all these really funky financial issues. And so then it was like, okay, wait, you know, what is your utility? What's the account number? How do we pay it? Where's your bank account? So I created this organizational system. I'm still at work. I'm telling stories to my colleagues. And they were like, wait a minute, I'm kind of having that issue with my parents. Can I get a copy of this tool you created? And so that kind of, the light bulb went off for, off for me and I wrote up a business plan and that's when I entered the AERP Foundations Award. And I did a whole business plan around creating a life organizational tool for families of all means. So it's meant, it's a, you know, it started out as a binder system and it's meant for low income all the way up to high net worth individuals where people can collate everything in a two inch binder and have everything that they need to have documented about their life, their accounts, their assets, in one place and it's easy to get to. I, I love that you said of all means, because I do think sometimes people see these systems and they go, well, you know, I'm, my parents don't have any money. That's not for us, but you're right. I mean, there are all kinds of things that can come up, medical, you know, um, records and allergic reactions. And, you know, I remember when my mom got sick, just knowing what she was allergic to was such a common question that mm -hmm. I had to be present for. So, so it's interesting to me also that you were the local adult child. You had siblings who really didn't see what was going on because they weren't having the regular or as regular of interactions and they weren't seeing your parents from, from day to day. So um, that was, and here your parents came from an organized background too. So it was probably like a, almost like a double whammy where it's like, well, mom and dad always planned, they're taken care of. But in actuality, this was something you're right. Cause when I do my own planning, I don't go now, I better have a plan if I get dementia. I, I just don't think that happens, right? So Well, no, and even if you do get dementia, you're not going to know. Most <laughs> people don't recognize it. So. Right, right. 
for a friend like you. Um, so, you know, I know from talking to you and my, my own life experience that we don't want to wait until something goes wrong, right? I mean, we want to have these conversations with people um, and utilize these tools, the kinds of tools you're talking about now. We want to put the plans in place now. And Jenica talked about some of this with us last week, which was really helpful. Um, but where do you suggest that an adult child starts talking with their parent or loved ones? You know, in, in my case, I don't have children, but I have, you know, nieces and nephews and four godsons. I love all these kids dearly. Who knows who will talk with me about it one day, but you know, how do you start it and how do you tackle the process? Yeah. So, I mean, it, there really is kind of two prongs to it. So one, I mean, I still have, you know, I have younger children, so they know I live this. So they hear me talk about it. I'll be like, you know, if that happens to me, there's a note in the safe. Like if mama, you know, starts to have these issues, go get that letter and let me read it. <laughs> um, so I think it's just start early, having those conversations earlier with your adult children and make it not be awkward. Make it so they know, you know, this happened to, you know, my uncle or this happened to mom and they saw it with my parents. So they're well versed in it. But I think for most of the adult children I talk to all the time, my first recommendation is do the plan for yourself and go to your parents for advice and counsel or to be your backup. You know, like mom and dad, and I did that with my in-laws. We went to them. They were going to be our backup to raise our children. So we took them our plan and, you know, here's all of our information. And so when I shared with them, it made it very easy for them to share back with me. Because there is kind of this generational shift to keep your money private and don't talk about it. And it, I think it's, you know, from 20 years ago, it was like, don't tell people you have the, their name's power of attorney or don't give it to them. That's all changed now. The thinking yeah. has really shifted, but there's still this thinking. And the sooner you open up that discussion and show them like, here's what I did. What might you do different? Or how did this work with your mom and dad? Ask for advice. It's the greatest place to start a conversation. Or use the news. Something happens in the news, you know, I guess when Michael Jackson died or Prince died, he didn't have a will. You know, what happens if you don't have those things in place? So I think using your own scenario as well as the news can really help. Yeah, I, I was shocked to hear mm -hmm. like Prince did not have plans in place. I mean, I guess you, we can all be guilty of thinking we're going to live forever. But I really like the strategy of like, even me going to my girlfriends and saying, guys, I'm putting this in place. Let's do it together. But I love the idea of going to your parents and saying, I'm doing this because it just opens the door. It makes the conversation so much easier. Yeah. I just, people don't, this is the kind of stuff they don't want to talk about. Their mortality, taking time to get organized and focus on things that may not feel so pleasant. But, you know, as Jenica said to us last week, this kind of planning is a gift to your loved ones too, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so I, that's a great strategy. And um, you and I have talked about some strategies that I want to employ with some of my friends and best clients too, because I think this is so important. Um, so, you know, I find in talking with people, this leads into my next question. Now, you know, taking time now to get organized, it, that's, that's difficult, right? We're all so busy. Everybody thought we'd be stuck at home. We'd have time to organize our closets and so on, which I guess we did for a while with the pandemic. Um, but they're in some ways we're busier than ever because it's almost like it, I, I hear people say, I'm busier at work now than I've ever been in my career. And so it's a really interesting time. And I think it adds layers onto that whole, you know, oh, I have time to get to that later and not put a level of importance on it. So do you have suggestions for making this a priority and actually carving out a little time? Yeah, and I, <clears throat> I usually tell people, just take 15 minutes and, and start, especially, you know, depending on where you are, most of us are online. If you have a business, there's multiple usernames and passcodes. Like, start online. Figure out how you're going to document all your usernames and passcodes, the security questions and pins, because mm -hmm. this is really planning for living. And that's mm -hmm. what's hard is estate planning kind of gets into what happens when you die. But doing all this stuff for yourself now will make your life easier. If your usernames and passcodes are written down, you won't have to look them up again. If you use, you know, a passcode keeper, that's great. Just make sure you print it out so someone else can get to that information. Because should something happen to you and you not be available, that's going to be the first roadblock. I mean, even the passcode on your computer, I've had several parents 
that have a 20 year old and something happens to them, they can't, they knew it was on their kid's computer, but they can't even get past the screen lock, you know, and that's on the phone too. So there's lots of things that people can do just to spend 15 minutes writing down your usernames and passcodes. And mm -hmm. then when you do bill pay, you can add, add that information. If you just write down your account numbers, the phone number for, to connect to, where it auto pays from, you know, you can do it in a little binder. It really won't take you very long. I mean, it, it could be two or three hours that you could spend in 15 minute chunks over two or three months. Sorry about the dog. That's okay. Life happens. But it, yeah. I mean, it's true. I think, I mean, to that end, life is harder now because we can't do the same old things we've been doing. So that's all the more reason you need to start documenting things because, I mean, imagine like all the stuff that's in our head, it's on our computer, it's in a file cabinet, it's on our phone. We know our stuff is all over, but we know where it is because it's in our head. So I think that's the important thing is really considering how do you manage and collect all this information um, becomes vitally important now more than ever. Well, and actually this raises a good point, Kay, because passwords do change. Like you said, in some of these sites we use, you know, have a trigger, what, every 90 days or whatever it is, hey, time to update your password. So you almost need, a, a we as, you know, people trying to think about these things, need to, to have an awareness of a password change. Now I need to update my mm -hmm. record. Because like you said, like my dog barking, life happens. You never know when something's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, that was a silly example, but it's true. I mean, I have a, a, a girlfriend who's um, sister just had something out of the blue happen, landed in the hospital during a pandemic. People can't get to her. You know, the information flow is not as good. And it's, it's very difficult for them right now. And it's, you just don't know. So we all, I think being cognizant of these kinds of things that are on the screen, when you add a new doctor, when you change your password, mm -hmm. try to remember, have this repository, maybe it's memory bank where you can update those things, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and that's, I mean, they can get a binder or a spiral bound notebook. It's easy to do and just create a category categorization system with tabs in it. It's super easy to do, but it's just, it's one of those things that it's one more thing to do. So it's hard for people to get started. Um, so there right. are ways to tackle that. It's one more thing, but if we assign a level of importance to, you know, things like, um, this, which is highly important, you know, going back to the whole Stephen Covey, urgent, uh, what is urgent and what is important, you know, I find I do fall victim several times a day to things that really are not that important, but they feel very urgent. Right. Uh, so you have some really, really good products and services that have evolved since I've known you. Um, you've expanded a lot and I, you're also a huge advocate for helping people age in place. Like you said, this can be 20 something year olds too. This is not just about aging in place. I mean, even though our our title for today, today's Ask the Expert had to do with um, helping people as they, um, you know, seniors get organized. You're, you're right, life happens, it can happen when you're in your 20s. So I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about the products that you've developed. You, you mentioned the binder, but mm -hmm. you have some really good tools. And guys, these make really good gifts. Holidays are coming. You know, what better can you give your loved ones in something like this? So anyway, Kay, would you tell us a little bit about your some of these products? Sure. So the binder was really the first place I started because I know it. everyone has so many different types of accounts and relationships. So it needed to be something that was infinitely adjustable. So it, the binder really just has sections, personal, financial, online, medical, household, and then everything else that you want to keep track of, including estate plans and information. Um, so it's, you know, a papered system, very traditional. And then when I started working with AERP, they wanted to go to a book format. So then I ended up working on memory bank and workbook for organizing life. So it could be in a bookstore and it really is like a kid's workbook. It just prompts you through filling out all that information. And it's, I think on Amazon now it's maybe $15 to get the workbook. Um, and then for people that are like, I don't want any more paper. I've gone through that. I've gotten rid of it all. We have a flash drive system that's basically um, an updated version with like what we don't have in the workbook is things like a credit freeze because when it was printed in 2015, that wasn't a big deal. But now it's very important to make sure that you have, you know, a way to freeze your credit instantly and there's different services around that. 
and screen protectors, your screen saver. So we've added some things to it. And so the flash drive is basically a paperless system. It's an editable PDF. People can change it, they can print it, they can make copies of it and share it. So it's however people want to use it. So in addition to being able to order the work, workbook on Amazon, they can go to your website and get the tools too, right? Right. So memorybank.com, they can get all those things. Yeah. Okay. Now, record keeping is at the heart of this. Um, it, can you go over with us how to figure out what to keep? Because in my business, I run into, okay, and myself, I'll admit it, <laughs> paper hoarding. Um, but you know, people have boxes and boxes of records. And I think that somewhat overwhelms people when they're retirement age or seniors getting out of their property they've been in for 30 years. They're like, I don't even know where to begin. And a lot of it's the records. So if you could give us a brief idea of where to turn for information on what to scan, what to toss, um, you know, what we better keep in electronic format. Yeah. So, I mean, and I think this starts with the systems we created when we were, when we bought our house and the file cabinets we made, we just stay with that system. We're not creatures of, we're creatures of habit. We don't change things. So people get tied to the way that they're doing stuff, but there really is no reason to keep your bank statements anymore. They're all stored in the online portal. Now I have several clients that are like, I don't trust the online portal. And I'm like, you know what? That online portal is there. People can get to your stuff, whether you open up a username and passcode or not, your stuff is still there. So, True. you know, it's, it's considering what do you need to actually keep keep copies of. There's no reason to keep your bank statements. Now, I mean, I'm actually a bb and client and I know that they're going to go through a merger. So I'm actually going to, I have downloaded all my statements and I will keep them because usually when two banks merge, sometimes they get rid of one bank's records or the others. So you do want to just create some copies of those, especially for tax filing, if you haven't already saved that information somewhere. Um, but in general, it really depends on what kind of record you have. So I would say the question of, you know, do I save it or shred it comes down to what is it? The big ones usually leave your tax records. Tax records for most Americans, they don't need to keep their tax records for more than three years plus the current tax year. Most people know, oh, I need to keep them for seven years, but that's not true. I would ask your accountant. It's only if you have a certain type of stock transactions, then you would need to keep your records for seven years. But so most people need to keep them for three plus one year. Um, so I would also say we talked a little bit about the mortgage. Like, so when you have a mortgage and you refinance or you sell your home, keep the mortgage release statement that you get because if banks do merge, sometimes that information gets lost. And I actually went through this a couple of years ago where there was a lien on our house from like two refis ago. So we've been here a while. So we've you know taken advantage of the changes. Um, and you want to keep that because I couldn't do the refinance until we had the release from the other mortgage company. And that's yeah. like four or five months. Um, so other things like auto records, you don't need to keep your automo your car records once you sell it. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can keep or shred. Um, the first thing is really to think about what is it that I need to save and what's important to have copies of. And right here, they've put on the screen, I do have a it's like a little workbook that goes through everything. So here's all the important documents that you need to collect and have stored somewhere. And here's all the things that you should save or shred based on the category, because it really does change based on your circumstances. So it gives a little context to each thing. What should you save and what should you shred? And there's the link for it is at memorybank.com forward slash save. Um, it'll just send you the PDF and it'll give you those tools that you can keep. One's to stick by your shredder and the other one can be by your file cabinet. Um, and that should be a good guide to get you started into how do you organize all this information? Yeah, that's that's really good. I mean, this is a question I get all the time. Um, and you may need a couple bank statements if you're, you know, refinancing or getting a mortgage. But yeah, I mean, I have people, gosh, I'm helping a woman right now whose parents passed away. They're in their 80s and they had their parents' medical records among 40 other paperwork. I mean, so talk about overwhelm. Yeah, well, in um, the, what's interesting is in the time, the, the interesting thing is, I mean, I've had, normally I had to take a I'm power of attorney for several clients. So I'd have to take the original power of attorney into the bank and show it to them. And now they're like, no, 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 you can just send it electronically. So, and I don't know if you're finding that with some of your settlements is 
They're, they don't want you to come in with your papers. It's just send us the digital copy and we're good. So it's yeah. interesting now people are adopting the technology a lot more readily. Yeah, and I, I think that's great. Um, it's nice because you can do things from anywhere now too. You know, if someone's traveling, that doesn't preclude them from getting things done. So, right. um, so the other thing I thought was really interesting in the evolution of your business is you have a daily money management system now and you're a daily mm -hmm. money manager. Mm -hmm. um, so I see so often where one partner or spouse knows where everything is and how records are kept, passwords. You know, this can be for insurance or banking, bill pay. You know, I mentioned I, I had a very painful experience of losing uh, one of my very closest friends um, a few years ago, and she had um, glioblastoma. And one day everything changed and there were no, there was no longer, in addition to going through a major health and family crisis, mm -hmm. it was very close to an economic crisis for the family. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to know um, with this daily money management, could you talk a little bit about that and how your systems can help people? Yeah. So um, a lot of times, and it's funny, you know, people will get the system and they just don't want to do it. They don't have the energy to do it. They don't want to have a conversation around it because it's mundane. So, um, but what our business evolved to is I kept having clients like, can you just come in? Can you take care of the bills? You know, things are getting overwhelming for me. So we started paying bills for our clients. We started doing home maintenance tasks because either they were traveling or they're busy at work or it was the wife, the widow, um, she lost her spouse who used to do all the honeydew list. And they don't know even how to begin because they've never, it's just not part of their practical huh. experience. So um, for most of our clients, we actually were going in, we see them, you know, we're not seeing them as much now for health reasons. So we pick up the mail, we have phone conversations, several of them Zoom, um, but we're basically doing all their bill pay. We're almost, uh, like we're their personal financial assistant. So we're doing everything around their day-to-day -day finances for them. They still have a wealth advisor and a financial advisor. They still have an estate lawyer. Um, and we just coordinate all the pieces. We get all their stuff ready for taxes and we help make sure that the taxes are filed on time and that they're getting all their deductions because so many people forget some of the things that they should be taking like they're, especially you know, later in life, they have a lot of health costs or personal care assistance coming into the home. All of those things can go towards your health care deductions. So we just, we help do that for people where they're just overwhelmed or too busy and can't do it themselves. Yeah, I, I think that's great. I mean, you even mentioned at the beginning of this, your parents had unwittingly uh, secured two different people to do the gutters. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that happen. And um, I could see that being really, really helpful to people. I, I don't know how, you know, I don't even know how you handled it when you had kids and your parents and your life and your work. It's just much. So to have people like this you can lean into, I think is fantastic. Um, so, Okay, we're getting to the end here and I could ask you like 10 more questions. Um, and I bet there are other people who would ask questions, but as we wrap up here, is there anything else we should be thinking about related to this or that you want to add? Yeah, so um, one of the things that is, you know, more my personal um, vision on this is that everyone really needs to think about this as making a change in life as we are adulting. So I love the millennials came up with this term what do you need to do to get responsibility over life? And we kind of get to a certain stage where we're like, I'm done. I know it all. I have it. But we don't. The day we stop growing and learning and being ready to adapt and change um, is going to be really difficult for us to continue to age well because things like a pandemic happen. No one foresaw this, but it changes people that are, you know, I want to, I have clients that are like, I want to age in place. I love it here. I can go out and see my friends. Well, for six months, they haven't been able to go out and see their friends and they're very isolated in their homes. So now we're talking about how might you want to see your life change and be different. And it's really hard if you don't kind of have a habit of reevaluating, where am I? What do I want? How do I want to live? And it might not mean that I'm staying in my home or it might not mean I'm moving into a big aging community or a senior community. It might mean something else. Maybe I'm going to build that house on the back of my daughters and I'm going to live there. There's so many different options to consider now. So I just think, you know, I just hope everyone takes that we never stop. We should never stop adulting and growing. 
Uh, yeah, you, I think you're right. And I just, I, I, you know, I never thought I'd be in my 40s, which I still am. Um, and, you know, and thinking about these things with parents and my own friends having problems and their kids, I just, I, you're right. You, you kind of get in this groove of like, and maybe it's that same genetic component that says, oh, this will never happen to me. You know, mm -hmm. I'm Prince. I'm one of the most famous musicians tons of money. I don't need to plan. I can do that later. And it's like, I think you get in these frames of mind. Maybe your, you know, neural pathways need a little more refining, but, and we don't take care of things we know we should take care of. And we don't adapt, like you said, and we maybe stop adulting and thinking about the things that are really important. And nobody means to do it. It just happens, right? So it's important that people like you and I keep pinging on people we love and, you know, just talking to you reminds me, I have work to do. And for those of you watching, I'm, I'm you know, I'm preaching to the choir here. I, I have work to do. I haven't done everything Kay recommends or Jenica from last time recommends. So, you know, maybe we have to set up times with our friends and loved ones to, to get some of this done. Kay, this has been so good. This is your contact info. For those of you watching, I cannot recommend Kay strongly enough not only because she's put great systems into place, but because her heart is behind them. She put all of this together. She was deeply impacted by something that happened in her life. So this isn't just a system. This is a system from somebody who's been there and felt that and knows what you're going through or what you might be going through and has developed tools that can help you. And you can lean into her and her uh, experience and um, really benefit yourself and others from it. So. I encourage you to reach out to Kay, check out her website, check out her blog. Was that on there, your blog address? Uh, I don't know if I have it on there. <laughs> what was it? Dealingwithdementia.org. Dealingwithdementia.org? Yes. Okay. So dealingwithdementia.org, um, keep that. If you don't know anybody who needs it, I bet at some point you will. So, um, and Kay, I want to thank you for being with us today. We did run out of time to ask questions because we're a couple of minutes over, but... Um, I encourage those of you watching, send questions you have. Um, if you're um, looking for this information later and can't find it, reach out to me or Jennifer will get it to you. And in Kay, it'll probably be somehow attached to her website or Facebook page. Mm -hmm. It'll be on mine and it'll be on YouTube. And so um, I thank you again, Kay, for coming today. I really do. Oh, I, I think an incredible um resource with a wide reach and i love that you have that personal experience and passion behind it so thanks well thank you uh, always a pleasure yep and uh jennifer as usual thanks for your work behind the scenes and for getting us ready jennifer puts our slides together and does a lot of this coordination so thank you jennifer Yay. and um her assistant finnegan helped some too and um <laughs> We're going to see you all next time for Ask the Expert. Today is the 15th, Ooh, tax day for the businesses. And we'll be talking with somebody again on the 29th. We're going to have another great local expert. So thanks for tuning in. Please don't keep us a secret. Share this information with people you love, know, care about, here might need a little help. And uh, if you do need help with local real estate, please uh, reach out to me. Um, I will be happy to help you. And if you need help somewhere else, I'm happy to help you find a good realtor in another part of the country. So thanks again for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.